Welcome to Cam's Art Out of the Fire. This week we're going to be making up a samurai mask. Here's one that I've drawn up. Um, because of the local restrictions have just come in that everyone's going to have to wear a mask in Victoria, I decided to make a new mask. Uh, so I'm going to make this one. I'm going to make it. I've got a template already cut out, ready to go. So I've got the four parts. I've got the teeth, the, the front main face part and all that. I'm going to cut this all out onto a piece of 3 mil leather. I'm going to tool it and shape it and form it. So yeah, so I'll, and yeah, I'll show you how to do that. So yeah. Okay, so we've got the pattern cut out and it's now sitting on the leather. I'm going to need to go around it and trace out the lines. Try and make sure you use the minimal amount of leather you can. Don't waste your leather. Uh, try and fit it in so it actually fits a little bit better. Uh, and yeah. This is a seconds uh, three mil leather hide from um, the local tannery just out the road from here. So uh, yeah, so I do recommend trying to use the best veggie tan leather you can get your hands on or what you can afford. Okay, um, cut them down into small pieces and make it easier to cut out. Uh, that way you don't have to deal with a big piece all at once. And yeah, just go around, cut it out as close as you can to the line. Okay, when it gets to this point here, you're gonna actually need to work out, you're gonna need a scalpel actually cut around this so I could, yeah I'm really having problems speaking um, because your scissors won't be able to fit in in here as easily as a scalpel will just take your time go around Okay, I've got a sponge and a bit of warm water here. Uh, we're just gonna wet this down, let it soak in. We're also gonna have a, once while this is soaking and absorbing in, we're gonna be transferring the, the image onto a piece of tracing paper, or transfer paper. Because we, gives this, that way you're using the time convenient that while waiting you can be using it to make do this these kind of jobs. Shouldn't take long for this to dry out either. Let's so. give the back a bit of wipe, wipe too. Pop them to the side to dry. Don't forget to dry area off before we actually start doing the tracing. Alrighty, I've got a piece of tracing paper and I'm going to go over top of this. I might flip it that way because I want to try and use this whole piece to do all of the parts. So. Okay. 
First things first, go around the outside. Oop. This is mostly just to get a rough guideline more than anything because it will come to how you tool it, how your hand moves is what the finished product is going to look like. So this is just to give you an idea on um, where your lines need to be. Okay, these are now dry to touch, but still cold, so they're still pliable um, and still slightly wet. Uh, this is the best time to actually mark, get your stencil you just done. I want to put it on to line it up the best you can. Get a pen, ballpoint pen, or a, a um, stylist and just go around marking out your lines firm but not too firm not too hard because you don't want to push through the paper so now I've got the lines on there you want to be able to just see them. Do that. Do that to the rest of them, and then we'll come back and we'll do the next stage. So yeah. Okay, uh, I've got my um, oh, brain really not working. Um, my knife to actually do the carving part now. Uh, this is the one that I made up for myself out of the uh, one of the blade out uh, of the leather working books. It's just a sharp point with a thick cutting surface, so makes it so the leather flares out that little bit more. You could do this with a, a scalpel, but most scalpels are way too thin. You can see the difference between the two of them. This is actually better off to flare out your, um, your leather, but also make sure it's sharp and clean, because if you don't, you're not going to get a nice clean line when you do this. So. So let's start where we've got marks. You may have noticed just then that I was using the moving it around more the leather, not the knife. Instead of doing those movements, I hold it in position and just move the leather to where it needs to be. I find that way is the easiest way to make sure you don't have any over it, over flicks. It also means you've got a controlled, instead of doing like so, you can guide guide it that little bit easier if you move the leather. Like so. Find your lines. And just if they're straight lines you can just do that long draw but if they're curved you're better off actually moving the leather
Now do that to all the rest of them and um, yeah, I'll show you the next stage after that. Okay, they've now all been tooled out. Now you're going to give them another light bit of moisture just to get them soft again, uh, soaked again. Uh, make sure you get your, your hard chopping block or piece of granite. Like I've got a piece of um, off cut piece of granite from uh, the local uh, stonemason um, that I was able to get for about five bucks. But you can buy chopping boards about the same thickness as what this is. Um, but yeah, I do recommend getting yourself a hard surface to work on, preferably stone. Um, that way, when you hit, hit with the hammer and the um, the tools, you'll be able to um, get some shape. Uh, it makes it easy, so it doesn't bounce as much. Um, I brought uh, some new ones this week. I'm gonna have a look, see how these go. So we'll see how they go. Um, once I work out how to open the packet. <laughs> So, okay, we're going to need that one, going to need this, this one, to go around all the edges, or well, every line to actually make it a bit more bolder and pop that little bit more, so, yeah. Okay, now that we've done these, they're all been gone around. Now we need to decide on where we're gonna be putting the texture uh, and what colors I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be doing red, black, and gold. So I'm thinking this section here to be red, so I'm gonna leave that solid. The blacks I'm gonna texture and the, the thinner pieces like these, I'm gonna leave gold. So, but I've got a choice of sure if you guys can see three different texture tools now so I'm gonna give these a test run to see how they go um, these have slightly dried out so I need to actually wet them again but yeah um, I'm gonna give these some texture and see how they go so Okay, now that they've been textured, now you want to grab your, um, oh, brain really is not working. Uh, the tool to take off the edges, it's got a little forky bit in the thing. You want to run that around while still, just to take off the edges so when you, um, it's not going to irritate your skin as much. I should have done this before texturing, but I couldn't find the tool, so. Because at this stage you've got a choice, you can start dying. Alrighty. 
Now it's deforming. We want to try and get it so it starts to shape around your face. So I want to bring out the chin that little bit. Okay, this is a project from another thing that I was playing with that I haven't finished, but I had an idea that this will help with forming. Okay, so I've just placed the teeth in, they're still a bit wet, and I've just got a couple of pins holding it together, but it's nearly dry, so you're starting to get the idea of how it's going to come, come out. So the next stage is to actually glue this together, then I'm going to stain it, and then I'm going to paint it. So, but yeah, it's starting to look good. Whoop. But yeah, I still need to put the teeth and that in in the position but yeah so I reckon it's gonna look cool when it's done so I'll we'll catch you in a bit okay so I've glued on put on some um, uh, now I can't remember the name but contact adhesive that not contact adhesive uh, contact glue on both sides of so I can mount the teeth in um, just have to wait for it to get slightly tacky and then we slot it in Like so, hope like hell I don't get it all over like I just did. Try not to get the contact adhesive everywhere. That's the bottom teeth in. Now I'm going to do top ones. Like I said, try not to get contact adhesive everywhere. But now the teeth are in position, glued in. I will come back and cut some of this um, excess leather off um, once it's dry. But yeah, now the teeth are in position, ready to go. I'm going to grab that scalpel and take away those excess bits of glue before they set. But yeah, it gives a, that way the teeth are now in. Once they have I'll be putting these, these pads on as well. So, I've got a contact adhesive and a glue off on the off side. So, I want to clip here, clip here. Now, should dust double check that. So, I want to put glue along here and here. Ooh, way too much. And I just added way too much glue to this. <sighs> I 
I'm gonna, I don't recommend juicing your finger. You need to do the same on this. I recommend not using your finger like I am. Um, this is just because of way too much on that stick and I can't get it off. Um, I do recommend if you've got a contact adhesive specific brush that lives inside the conceit in the contact adhesive, this would probably be the best best way of doing it. Um, but yes, this is just my way of quickly getting it done. Put lid back on that. <clears throat> just have to wait for it to get tacky. Shouldn't take long. Make sure your hands aren't covered like on mine are. And place. And re peg it. And let it dry. Make sure you don't, if you see any extra bits that shouldn't be on there, try and remove them now because you don't want to have this on when you start dyeing it or painting it later. But yeah, it's now I just have to wait for the glue to dry and then we can do the painting section, uh, not painting, the um, yeah, the dyeing and the painting after that, so yeah, catch you in a bit. Okay, I've now got some red dye and some black dye, uh, got them in some cups, ready to go. I'm going to paint this whole thing with the red dye and then I'm going to come back and um, go over with the black afterwards um, to do do the highlights or the low lights I should say but yeah because we're going to be painting the teeth and that and all that I don't mind if I get a little bit of dye on them because we're actually going to paint them with actual paints so, so just to go over top of the dyes ooh this looks like really nice red I might have put too much in that cup. Almost looks like Iron Man Red or Nilla Cherry. I'm actually enjoying this project, just as a muck around thing, so... Um, I need the mask for quarantine, so... This will... Be just the um, outside layer, I'm actually going to line it with a proper... Um, medical grade mask. Uh, the... the um, surgery masks, so I can actually... Uh, replace the inside, and have this on the outside. So... But yeah, but for a, for a little project, it's not bad. Yeah, 
Yeah, you may have noticed that I'm also leaving some high and some low, leaving extra bits and then extra la uh, extra bits of la uh, thick red and some lighter bits. And I want I want some interesting textures to come through. So. Don't forget to do slightly on the inside. I don't want to do the whole inside, I just want to do the edges. Um, the reason for that is I want, don't want to have all, to have um, the dye transfer onto the, the mask on the inside. But I just want that slight edge to be covered so that way it doesn't stand, uh, there's no uh, raw edges. But yeah. So it's actually looking quite interesting. So now let that dry slightly. But then we're going to start playing with the red, uh, the black, I should say. And just want the black. I'm going to use a brush this time to paint on to certain sections because we don't want the black to be everywhere. I've got to find a brush to do the really up close and detailed bits. The other reason why I put the red on before I put the black on is I wanted to see if the if the black leaves any of the um, bits that I didn't expose or didn't paint properly will have the red tinge underneath it so it would actually show through. I'm not going to do a very thick black. Like, I want the red to sort of pop through in some spots. Where, because I'm using inks, I mean, not inks, dyes, um, you could also do this with um, spray paint it and then go over the top of it with um, a um, light uh, dry brush paint. But because I wanted to do this a little bit more traditional way of doing leather work, I'm playing it with it this way. Try not to get any ink, uh, any of the dye on the parts you don't want it to be black because it's almost impossible to get the black off. It's one side. Let's do the other. You may have noticed that I've left the teeth, so I'm going to come back and actually paint all them different. So uh, I'm actually going to paint them with actual uh, acrylic paints once I seal it. I'm 
Now let's swap over to a smaller brush because I can fix fix up those tiny little bits that need to be touched up now. Okay, I'm using the uh, leather sealer, clear, but I've also dipped it, uh, reused the red cup, so because it's going to be red based, I just reused the, um, the same container. I'm also going to use the same um, brush as well. Okay, it may be a little bit different from how I normally would do it, but this is also, it will make it in, uh, there, I'm really having problems speaking. Um, this is saving containers and wastage and all that stuff. So now that it's had a, a little bit of sit and cool, uh, sit and dry, I should say. Um, I'm now just going to coat the whole thing in the the clear um, uh, the clear sealer, and then once that's all dry, I'll come along and paint the gold onto where I want the gold. We may put a couple coats of this clear on. I am going to coat the inside with this as well. Um, this is also a way to keep it so I don't I'll hold the shape that little bit better make sure you go around the edges dry for the moment um, if you've got bubbles like this what's coming on it um, go over it with a hair dryer and um, it'll blow the uh, bubbles away um, I don't have a hair dryer because I don't have hair where well, I'm just going to use my my breath to get rid of most of them. But once this is done, I'm going to give this a buff. Um, give it a polish with a um, shoe brush. Just to make it nice, look a little bit nicer. Yeah, I'll do a couple more coats and I'll do the inside as well. So, but yeah, that's so coming along. Okay, I've got some uh, gold, actually this one's bronze. Uh, I couldn't find my gold paint, so I'm going to go bronze instead. I'm going to paint certain parts of this, uh, and possibly even the teeth. I haven't decided if I'm going to go white with the teeth or gold with the teeth. So, we'll see how it comes out. So because this is having a bit of play with this just to see how it comes out let's, let's get a bit on there
we'll come back and I'll show you how it comes out. Well, now it's all painted up, nearly dry. Um, I reckon it's going to have some interesting patterns come through when it does actually dry completely. Um, but yeah, it's actually come up okay. Uh, I just need to put a couple of holes and put some thonging on and that will be ready to go. So yeah, the inside's still a bit tacky. So, But yeah, it's come along quite nicely. Nice little one day project for myself. So. But yeah, um, if you'd like to see more of these kind of projects, uh, let me know. Um, like, comment, and subscribe, and feel free to comment. But yeah, should be fun. Just have to put the um, inside mask and then it'll be done. So, I'll catch you on the next one. Have a lovely one. Bye.